Greenpeace is in the municipality of Namia, which is nine kilometers from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant in Fukushima prefecture. And we're approaching the fifth anniversary of the earthquake, tsunami, and nuclear disaster at the Fukushima nuclear plant. This municipality of Namea was home to nearly 20,000 people uh, on March the 11th. And on March the 12th, they were all evacuated. Well, the population of Nami, living very close to the nuclear plant at Fukushima Daiichi, uh, they obviously were struck by first the earthquake, then the tsunami on the coast, and then, within a matter of hours, radioactive releases from the Fukushima Daiichi plant. It was only on the 12th that they were finally evacuated. 20,000 people basically scattered across Japan. And what's happened since is that those citizens uh, have been trying through a resolution process to get compensation from Tokyo Electric, the owner and operator of the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Unfortunately, Tokyo Electric is supposed to comply with this resolution process and the recommendations they make. But in 2014 and only last uh, December 2015, Tokyo Electric rejected uh, demands for increasing compensation. And what we're talking about is $450 extra per month for each citizen in Nami, across Japan, living in evacuated homes, uh, having lost everything. And Tokyo Electric basically concluded they shouldn't have to pay that money. It amounts to about $105 million every year. This is a nuclear company that caused a nuclear meltdown. At the same time, in the last four years, has returned a profit, and it's expected to return a profit this year of over $2 billion. So basically the nuclear industry has no regard for the well-being of citizens who were most affected by the nuclear accident in Fukushima. They're continuing to generate profits. And here we have the result. A town that's been here, community living here for over 1,500 years, utterly devastated. Now the Japanese government, what it's trying to do in Fukushima is effectively say that we're decontaminating and that we can return people to these areas that were contaminated by the accident in 2011. In some areas they are successfully decontaminating. Most areas the decontamination efforts are not working. Uh, this is area two. There's three categories. Area one, they're lifting the evacuation order very soon. Area 2, which includes this part of Nami, but also up in Itati, in northwest Fukushima. Uh, their plan is to lift the evacuation by March 2017. For the thousands of people that used to live here, the problem is the decontamination is not working. There's still a risk. But the government's saying, OK, we're lifting the order. And at that point, one year after, all compensation from Tokyo Electric ends. Um, so basically people are being left a choice, but really no choice. Return to your homes, possibly having an increased risk from radiation, which is not being decontaminated, or abandon all prospects of returning home, uh, but then also losing your compensation. So that's the policy of the current government, uh, effectively forcing thousands of people uh, to return or not to Fukushima. And there's a very clear objective, that is, five years after Fukushima, the nuclear accident began, the government is saying we're returning to normal. But the events of March 2011, five years on, there's anything but normal, either in Nami or throughout Fukushima Prefecture.